Hey everybody, welcome back to Better Computer. My name is Matt, and this right here is the Drunk Deer A75. It's a brand new keyboard from a brand new company, and it's unique in one really special way. So today we're going to go through the base specs. I'll go through those very quickly, um, but then we'll get into what makes this unique. We'll do a typing test before that as well, so you can get an idea for how it sounds. And I'll give you my recommendation at the end, but spoiler, if this sounds good to you, I really recommend it. I think it's quite a good keyboard actually. Okay, let's just lightning around through the specs. The 75% keyboard, it has a volume knob. The volume knob is made of metal, has a nice texture on the outside, and feels good. I like it. Uh, there's RGB backlighting, a capacity whole board. You can control the patterns and the things it does uh, with keyboard shortcuts. Uh, you can also use the Drunk Deer app, which is not available at the time of this review, but should be available by the time they ship to actual customers. Uh, this is a great time for me to disclose that I was given this keyboard early to review, uh, but there were no conditions on the what I put in the review or any say on the final cut. Uh, Drunk Deer is seeing this review at the same time you are. So all that out of the way. Um, there is uh, no wireless option on this. It's all wired. So there's a USB-C cable or a plug up here on the board. It ships with a USB-C cable, USB-C to C with a USB-A adapter uh, included. So you can plug it into whatever you'd like. Uh, the, key, the cable is braided. It's nice. It's unassuming, but it's, it's totally functional. Um, and it is uh, made of plastic. So this is a plastic keyboard uh, with feet, I should say. So if you like to just wreck your wrists by just typing like this, uh, you can do that, uh, but I don't personally do that. But anyway, it's made of plastic. Um, you can bend it, uh, but that's just kind of how it goes with plastic keyboards. Even though I prefer a metal keyboard uh, in general, metal frame, uh, this actually feels quite nice to type on. You only really notice it when you pick it up and are kind of surprised how light it is because the typing experience in general feels very, very good. I would say the switches that come with this are linear-ish. We'll talk about them in the next section, but it feels very nice to type on this keyboard. I'll give you a sound test here in a second, but I would say as someone who likes using linear key switches, um, this is this is one of the most satisfying key uh, keyboards I've ever typed on. Okay, so I've been pretty cagey about what switches this use. I said they feel like linears, and they do feel like linears, but they're a little different. Um, so when you're using a key, a mechanical keyboard with key switches, uh, they're either linears, they're tactiles, they're clickies, or a billion different variants of those. But whatever one you're using, they're effectively doing the same thing. At a certain point when you're pressing down a key, two pieces of metal are going to touch, they're going to complete a circuit, and that's going to send a signal to your computer that says, hey, the user just pressed this button. The point where the pieces of metal touch, that's called the actuation point. That's how far you have to press a key down for those to touch, and there's different preferences that people have for those. In general, if you're typing primarily, you're going to have a lower actuation point where you have to press the key further down for it to uh, complete that circuit and register a key press. If you're buying key switches more for gaming, you maybe want that point of actuation to be higher up, so you only have to press a tiny bit down on the key for it to register that. That improves the reaction times uh, when playing competitive games. And typically you have to choose before you purchase key switches which one you prefer and you're kind of stuck with that if you're working half the day and playing games half the day one of them's going to be optimized or the other with this you don't have to choose that's because they're using a completely different method for this uh, it's called the hall effect and basically it's using magnets and sensors and things to detect how far down the key is pressed so when you're pressing these keys down there's never a point where two pieces of metal come together Instead, the keyboard is internally tracking how far down each switch is depressed. So, when they're just sitting here like this, they're 0% depressed. When you press them all the way down and they bottom out, they're 100% depressed. But you can decide how far between those two points you want the actuation point to be. So if you want to just like barely touch it and have it actuate because you're playing a competitive game and you want every advantage possible, you can do that. Hit Command uh, or FN1 to make it as sensitive as humanly possible. If you want to have it be a little bit more requiring you to bottom out, because uh, you're just typing, you can hit FN9 and it's going to be as low as possible and you can do anything between. So one through nine, any of those sensitivities, basically 10% to 90% um, is how far it can 
uh, require you to go and you can just change it on the fly. So if you change from one mode to another while you're working, you can just hit the keyboard shortcut and change it. And that's really cool. So if we show this on screen, uh, here we are at the highest actuation point. You can see I can just press it down a tiny bit and it registers the key press on screen. And then I can change it to the lowest sensitivity or the highest sensitivity, lowest sensitivity, I don't know. But I'm gonna switch it all the way to the other end. And now pressing it down that same amount doesn't trigger a key press. But if I press further down at a certain point, it does. And again, these are the extremes, but you can go anywhere in between so you can find what works for you. So that's a pretty cool differentiator and something that you don't see in a lot of keyboards or if any keyboards. Um, what I really like about this is just, yeah, it feels good. It sounds good to type on and the ability to change the actuation point is just a bonus for me. I tend to keep it in the same spot. Being able to change it on the fly though is pretty rad. Um, the one thing I don't like about this keyboard is that it's... It's not really moddable. You can swap out the key switches or the key caps, I should say, if you want, but the key switches are just gonna be this. Uh, you can't really change this out, but you're kind of buying this keyboard for the key switches, so I don't know why you want to. Um, but yeah, just know that if you wanna change the key switches at a later date, you really can't with this keyboard. It's not built to be taken apart. It's not hot swappable. And even if it was hot swappable, I don't really know if normal key switches would work in it. Um, the same way, I kind of feel like it's built for the uh, the special ones that they've got. Okay, Matt from the edit, jump in in here just to clarify what I mean. The board is technically hot swappable, so you can very easily take the switches out and look at them and you can take them apart and see how they work. Um, but basically you'll see on the board, there's this little tiny sensor. So instead of the multiple pins and everything you're used to with the mechanical key switches, uh, you're gonna have just this little sensor that's detecting a tiny little sensor on the switch as it gets closer and further away. So that's what's doing the detection for how far down you've pressed the key. Uh, so you can, in theory, replace the switches with new ones if they break, uh, or if there were some other variety that, uh, of the style that came out, you could switch them out with that. But as of right now, you're really just going to be able to use the included switches with this. You can't swap in any cherry switches or anything like that. But anyway, I've really enjoyed using this keyboard. I think it's actually pretty darn good and I feel good recommending it. So I'll put a link to the uh, store where you can purchase it uh, today. I think it's on sale for like 30 bucks off during this launch window, but yeah, check it out. Uh, see if it works for you, but I think it's a pretty cool keyboard and wanted to share it with you today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.